Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk and today I'm going to film my February favorites. I'm going to start off with saying my voice is soft and scratchy because I'm still sick. Uh, it is technically now March so I'm filming this a little bit late but my voice is as back as it's been so filming away. And because I'm still not really feeling that great, I'm going to try to kind of make this a very short favorites video. And I'm also going to include my poetry favorites in this right at the end as well. And like always, I'm going to start off with my book favorite of the month, and that is The Whiskey, The Women, and The War. No ends, just the... yeah. Um, and this is by uh, Kevin W. Burke. I actually met him. He performed at WAN Poetry at Avant Garden uh, here in Houston. I have their YouTube channel linked down below so you can like watch their poetry videos and stuff. And they have a podcast. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in an upcoming video, but I'll have a link for their podcast down below as well, if I can link that kind of thing. I don't know. But I've started reading this. I haven't read much at all this month, but uh, this is kind of the only thing I've been picking at, and what I have read from it, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, so expect a review on this to come. <laughs> now my next favorite is just weird. It's just weird. But um, I've kind of gone from one cold to another cold this month. I've been sick twice. And now my family is getting sick again, which means I'm going to get their cold, and they, it's been a vicious cycle. So it kind of explains my next favorite, and that is this brand of tissues. It's the uh, Puffs brand with Plus Lotion, and you know how, I'm sorry, this could be a little TMI, but like you're congested and you're blowing your nose, and then it's all red and scratchy and painful and stuff, and then I went out and I got these, and I was like, I could just like rub my face with them. It felt so nice, so... I really like these. Now when I haven't been sick and I've actually, you know, gotten out of pajamas, put on real pants, wore a bra, that kind of thing, the typical thing that people do that I just have not been participating in in like five days. I have been wearing kimonos. It is like lazy girl's guide to, hey, I made an outfit or I, I tried to make an effort. Um, this is the pattern on it. It's just very typical kimono style. It's like you can see, it's very sheer. It goes below the butt and it has sleeves that are about this long so that hits above my elbow and I always get them in like the biggest size that they offer because I love big kimonos and this one is from Target. Also sticking along that I made an effort in you know looking like a human being uh, theme here I'm going to talk about this foundation and it is by uh, L'Oreal it's True Match it is in porcelain W1 this is the warm shade and <laughs> yeah porcelain my skin shade it's as close as I can get, um, and so I put it on the lower half of my face so that everything blends with my neck better, because my main foundation, because this is like, I would say a light to medium coverage, but so I only put it on this part of my face just to make the blending of everything better so it doesn't, you know, look crazy orange on my neck, especially when it oxidates, because, oxidizes, because I'm just, I'm that pale, so just been using that on the bottom half of my face and the regular foundation on the rest. Now this is something I got last month and I've kind of figured out my way of using it, and it is a ColourPop eyeshadow and this is in the shade Bill. And every time I read that, uh, that shade title, I think of Vampire Bill. Don't know why. Not like money. That would be something that a normal person would think about Bill, but... And it's like this really creamy, cool texture. It's so hard to describe. There are plenty of reviews and like first impressions on YouTube if you're curious, but it's just a cream consistency and that's the color. I like barely tapped it and yeah, it's just, it's so pretty and it is really, really forgiving. So I would recommend this for beginners. I have a lot of makeup favorites, shit. This is a NYX matte uh, lipstick and it is called Indie Flick. This is super orange. There is this um, lipstick by NARS, which is stupid expensive. It's one of the audacious ones. Uh, and I think it's called Lana or Geraldine, I don't remember. And it reminds me of that a lot. And I was really tempted to get it. And then I went straight to uh, Target and I bought this one instead. I didn't give in. But I bought this because I thought it would be a really cool spring shade. And here in Texas, February is our coldest month and it's been fucking freezing. So this is my little bit of spring. And this is just a quick mention. I'm very impressed that uh, this nail polish has stayed on as long as it has. I haven't used this uh, L'Oreal brand of nail polish in quite some time. It's what I have on my nails right now. I have painted these a while ago. I want to say Wednesday. I painted them on Wednesday because that was poetry night. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's almost Monday, so almost five days. And I have like the ittiest bit of chipping right on the corner of one nail. So I'm very impressed about the longevity. 
And now, this is my favorite favorite. I should have probably mentioned this like second thing. I love this. And it is a candle from Bath and Body Works and it is the Gourmet Espresso Candle. Oh, it smells so incredibly strong, but I love it. I cannot burn it for more than like five, 10 minutes max at a time, but it makes your entire room smell like espresso, but in like a sweeter, almost chocolatey coffee way and not in like a, oh, that's espresso bean. But, oh my God, it smells so good. I'm going to talk about my Netflix favorites and that's gonna be pretty short and sweet. I've only been watching two shows, pretty religiously, honestly. Um, first off, Supernatural. I am still loving it. I'm onto the seventh season, which I'm not loving. Sixth season, I really did not like, but it's still a favorite, you know what I mean? Like they've done better and so it's almost like, if the show had started off like this, I would probably think, oh, this is like a pretty great show, like I like it. But because they had such amazing seasons before, this one's falling flatter, but it's still addicting in that way. I don't know. It's cause one of my main favorite characters, not a main character, but you know, a, a main character isn't in the show right now. And it makes my heart hurt cause he was the comic relief. Anyway, um, not trying to spoil anything. So I'm keeping it there. Cause there could be multiple characters that are comic relief people. But yeah, so I am still really liking Supernatural. Just not as much as always. And my next Netflix favorites is House of Cards. I almost started doing the Game of Thrones sound so <laughs> and I'm sure my face was like, what are you doing? You gotta stop. And I want to say I'm on chapter 30 or 31 after <laughs> the collapse of Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to say that this one is a lot slower than prior seasons, but I like that it's less of them climbing and it's more of them falling and I find that really interesting. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm intrigued to see where the season's going to go. I think that, j not even just with this, but like typically with um, shows of this nature, if the protagonists start off on a high point, then they might end up going into a low point and that's where the season ends, or they'll hit a low point and then something good will start to happen and it'll be like a double arc kind of thing. But I kind of have a feeling that this is starting off in the negative and I think it's going to end in the positive, but I don't think for everybody. I think, yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen for everybody. I'm trying to be super vague in case you haven't watched Game of, oh my God, Game of Thrones, <laughs> oh, I need to sleep, in case you haven't watched House of Cards. So that was my horribly brief summary. Now I'm going to go on to just a regular movie favorite. Um, my friend Megan and I, we watched this, I think she recorded it maybe on HBO or something, and it is called The Thing Called Love, and <laughs> I adored this movie, it's about, Country, I'm gonna actually look up a summary, but uh, it's about this girl who is an aspiring country singer songwriter. Is that a good description of who she is? Yeah, that's pretty apt. Um, so she's an aspiring country singer songwriter, and she goes to Tennessee to uh, kind of compete in these uh, weekly competitions to be able to play like the Saturday night show or like intro or something to that effect. And I watched this much earlier in the month, so I'm trying to remember here. But it's about country music and. I don't like country music. Uh, but anyway, the music in this is very lyrically beautiful and you can you can tell that uh, these characters have this passion for the music and it's the passion in it that I think really drives the story home. It's very sweet. It has Samantha Mathis, uh, River Phoenix, Sandra Bullock, uh, why can't I say his last name? Dermot, Dermot Mer Merlot. I, I took NyQuil before I started filming this in hopes that I could take this off and go to sleep. I'm sorry. Hey, maybe this will just make it funny. I don't know. Now I'm going to quickly mention my one kind of TV thing I've been watching. That's a lie. I'm going to mention two. Yeah, I've been watching Chopped, <laughs> like an, embarrass an embarrassing copious amount of Chopped. Um, but other than Chopped, I have been watching Expedition Unknown. This is hosted by Josh Gates. Uh, he hosts the show Destination Truth, which I am a huge fan of. I love that show. It is so kind of campy, cheesy, comical, but it's about um, going and like hunting monsters and these urban legends and seeing if they're true or not. But you, you never they never actually succeed in finding any evidence, but it's just really funny and they're pretty decent with the suspense. And it's just, I don't know, I love that kind of thing. It's a very sci-fi show, but not stupid like Ghost Hunters. Ghost Hunters was stupid, I will admit this. <laughs> anyway, back to Expedition Unknown. Uh, hosted by Josh Gates is where he's going and trying, it's very, very national treasure. treasure. This last episode, 
literally was talking about a uh, map on the back of the Declaration of Independence and like Freemasons, but he does other stuff like uh, Viking Sunstones. But I said it when he did Destination Truth, I will watch anything that man hosts and I'm watching this and I'm still enjoying it. I think Destination Truth is better though. Now I'm going to quickly talk about my music favorites. I have been listening to uh, the Credence Clearwater revival a lot, like embarrassing amounts a lot. I've been very, very into classic rock the past like month, month and a half. Yeah, Bad Moon Rising, Fortunate Sun. What was that other one? Oh, huh, another embarrassing thing. So my brother downloaded a Led Zeppelin song and we share an iTunes account. And I was like, I forgot that I actually did like Led Zeppelin at one point in my life. I had a very big um, rock and roll kind of phase. I, I mean, I never really left the phase. It's just that I got into indie, folk, Americana, whatever that one is, whatever it's gonna be categorized as. I'm listening to a lot of Led Zeppelin. And I think my two favorites of Led Zeppelin's is Whole Lot of Love and Going to California. Going to California is a weird one for them. It does not sound very Led Zeppelin, but I really like it. It's much slower. Oh, I put a spell on you. I think that's a cover by the Clear Cle Credence Clearwater Revival. I should not have taken that NyQuil. And then kind of a quick honorable mention, um, the Airborne Toxic event, I'm actually wearing one of their shirts. Um, but I, I love that band and I'm not excited about their new CD called uh, Dope Machines. It's very do 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 but <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, kind of techno-y but not in a really techno way. If you're familiar with their music, it's mostly just guitar and very raw sounding and yeah they have some of their old stuff is more do 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 and they kind of fell back that way and I really don't like it and I wasn't gonna buy the CD but they announced the night before Dope Machines uh, was released that they're also releasing another album that they have not advertised at all and it's called uh, Sons of God and Whiskey and I was kind of leery about it because I wasn't sure if it was going to be religious or not but I'm like I just love the band and I think I could get over like religious connotation and music just to listen to beautiful music and a couple of the songs are very but all in all I really love that album and in order to buy that I had to buy Dope Machines and I'm like <laughs> whatever it's worth it I'm getting it and my favorite songs from Sense of God and Whiskey are Why 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 and California. And there it's definitely more poppy, kinda kitschy, catchy, I think is a good word for it. Kitschy and catchy. I didn't actually mispronounce it. I was trying to say two different things. This lipstick is looking super orange on camera, but I swear to God it's red. <laughs> but yeah, that is all I've been listening to in the way of music. Now on to poetry. Oh, this is from a favorite of last month, I believe, and if I didn't mention it last month shame on me um but i i watched the life of david gale which is an incredible movie and i highly recommend you watching it it mm, mm. Uh, and the quote goes like this fantasies must be unrealistic the minute you get something you don't you can't want it anymore to exist desire needs absent objects so desire supports itself with crazy fantasies this is what Pascal, a scholar of some sort, when he says the only time we're truly happy is when daydreaming about future happiness. Or why we say, the hunter is sweeter than the kill. Or, be careful what you wish for. Not because you'll get it, but because you're doomed to not want it when you do. Uh, this one is book related. I thought you guys would appreciate this. This is from uh, the Night Vale podcast. There's a monster at the end of the book. It's the blank white page where the story ends and you're left alone with yourself and your thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's scarily accurate. Then there's this one that I found that it's kind of depressing, but I'm gonna add it anyway because I really like it. How do we forgive ourselves for all the things we did not become? This is from uh, 14 lines from Love Letters or Suicide Notes. This is from a Tumblr thing from Daily Holzer. I think it's, they mean Jenny Holzer. Um, Expiring for love is beautiful, but stupid. <laughs> I think that's a fun way to end it. Uh, so that is all for this month's February favorites and poetry favorites. I hope I wasn't too boring. Um, well, I hate when people say that, but I don't know. I feel like I was, bleh. I'm still sick. I think you can kind of tell, but I hope you enjoyed this and I'm wanting to get more videos up. Um, I guess a little sneak peek for those of you who have stuck around this long. There's going to be a giveaway soon. It is going to involve a book and a shirt, a very, very cool shirt that Mm, might have something to do with poetry does have something to do with poetry so that you can look out for that I'm very excited about it and yeah I just wanted to say thank you guys because 7,000 subscribers that's crazy the poetry channel that I continue to mention I go to them um, every Wednesday night WA and poetry um, 
they recently reached a thousand subscribers on their YouTube channel and it's kind of a double way of us like kind of celebrating and giving back to subscribers and stuff. So yeah, look out for that. This is my little, my little sneak thing right here. Also, if you have any poetry recommendations, drop those in the comments because I'm really trying to read a lot more uh, diverse poetry. I'm not ever gonna film drugged again, I promise. I, that could be a lie. I'm sorry, I'm going to sleep now. <laughs> Bye guys. That was probably a really awkward face. <laughs> I give up. Okay, bye. Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk and I am here with Megan and we are going to review the Fifty Shades of Grey movie. Mm -hmm. We are this planet's greatest natural disaster. The way we treat our earth, the way we treat our skin, it is then my friend Jeff reminds me that we need to let hate atrophy.